Hello folks, welcome to the demonstration video number 12 of my eShop project. Today I am going to explain about the basic UI design of new product registration page. So without further ado, let's get into this. Ok, first let's go to the web browser to see our design. As you can see, I am currently on the home page of our eShop web application. To be able to access the new product registration page, first we need to enter the my products page using this drop down menu. I'll explain about this my products page in depth in a later video, currently it's still under construction. So to access the new product registration page, we have to click this yellow button called add product. As you can see, I am clicking that now. Ok, after those steps, now we are in our new product registration page. Going on the typical fashion of our eShop, you can see our header section like this. Then you can see our typical footer section on the bottom like this. Ok, now let's get into the UI design of the body section. As you can see, our product registration page got a title as add a new product. As you can see, I am using horizontal lines like these to separate various sections of this body part. Then here you can see a drop down menu to select the product category. It says select category from the list. You can see our list like this. Then here is a drop down menu to select the brand of the product. It says select brand from the list. You can see our list like this. Alright, then here is a drop down menu to select the model of the product. It says select model from the list, then you can see our list like this. Then as you can see this input field is here to add the title of the product. Then here are two radio buttons as brand new and used to select the condition of the product. Then seller can select the color of the product from here. As you can see, we are giving some common color options in these radio buttons. When it's unable to find a specific color from our given option, sellers can add their custom colors from here. Then here's a tiny add button to add the custom color. Then this field is here to add the available quantity of items. We can type the number on this field or we can use these arrows to select the number. As you can see, we can't go below zero using these arrows. Then this field is here to set the price of a product unit. Then this place is showing approved payment methods that buyers can use to do their payments. Then these fields are here to set the delivery charges of the product. This field is here to set the delivery charge when delivering within the Kalambu district area. Then this field is here to set the delivery charges to the places except of Kalambu. Then this field is here to add the description of the product. Then this section is here to add the images of the product. We can select single or multiple images to upload using this button. When clicking on that button, it opens Explorer to select images to upload. Then as you can see on here, our eShop is giving a notice to sellers as we are keeping 5% of the product selling price as a commission. Then this button is here to save the product to the listings. Ok, now let's check out the responsiveness of our new product registration page to the various display resolutions. Ok, now I am decreasing the display resolution virtually. As I am doing that, our page is getting a more compact view like this to fit on smaller devices with smaller display resolutions. Ok, now we are certain that our page is responsive to display resolutions. Now we can get into our code inside. Ok, now I am going to the Visual Studio code. As you can see, this is our adproducts.php file. To keep our page running in the state it should be, I am linking some other files inside of this PHP file. First, inside of the head tags, I am linking bootstrap.css, bootstraficons.css, then our own style.css file. To the bottom of the body tags, I am linking bootstrap bundle.js file and our own script.js file. Then inside of this PHP script, I am including header part.php file. Then inside of this PHP script, I am including footer section.php file. As you can see, these are the codes of our page title. Then these are the codes of the select product category drop down menu. You can see the options of the drop down menu here. Then these are the codes of the select product brand drop down menu. 
you can see the options of the drop down menu here. Then these are the codes of the Synet product model drop down menu. You can see the options of the drop down menu here. Then these are the codes of add a title to your product input field. Our input type is set to text as you can see. Then these are the codes of select condition of the product radio buttons. As we seen before there are two buttons as brand new and used in it. I am adding this checked attribute to the brand new radio button. By doing that our page will load selected that already. Then these are the codes of the select product colors section. As you can see there are some basic color options that was given by us. Then these are the codes of that input field which sellers can use to add their custom colors. Our input type is set to text as you can see. Then these are the codes of set product content input field. As you can see the input type is set as number. Then we are controlling the minimum number that a seller can set as zero. Then these are codes of the input field price of a single item. Then these are the codes of approved payment method showing section. Then we are setting some classes to these div tags. Then we are stylizing those classes on the style.css side using images. Then these are design codes of product delivery charges section. Then these are the codes of the field where seller can describe the product. As you can see we are setting a text area like this to insert the description. Then here are codes of the product image uploading section. Then here are codes of the actual image uploader. As you can see we are accepting multiple images at once. As you can see this is the notice by each of that we have seen previously. Then finally these are the codes of our save product button. So folks that's all I have to explain in today's video. Stay tuned for the next one. See ya.